John, I cuss. It happens. I mean, you either get shoot the shit Zeke or PC Zeke, but it's hard to intermingle both. Or maybe we should go to like a third tier of shoot the shit kids around. Yeah. There we go. Shoot the shit kids around. Just don't drop the F-bomb. Yeah. That's kind of like the theme of our show. You could say shit. Well, Just you, don't drop the F-bomb. I mean, Hank does have a song. In country music, you just don't use the F-word. <laughs> Everyone, my name is John Edwards. With me, as always, is Zeke Baker, and together we make the Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us a part of your day. Say hello to the folks, Zeke. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. And let's just get this out of the way right now, real quick. Our friends over at High Camp Flasks, they are doing a Kickstarter campaign for their Half Light Flask. We have the Firelight Flask and we have the Half Light Flask. It's really cool. The Firelight is the big 750. The Half Light is a 375. Stainless steel flask with a magnetically attached tumbler. Things really cool. You could take it anywhere. Hiking, camping, fishing on an airplane, whatever you want to do, just make sure it's in your check bag. Go to highcampflasks.com or at highcampflasks on Instagram to learn more. So, how was your week? Busy, as always. Me too. I had family in town. It was a pretty busy week, busy weekend, busy week, but happy to spend some time with you, my work wife. So, I did have an anomaly occur, though. What's that? One which I know you have never had happen, and even though it was kind of a... Is this like a skinny person anomaly? Is that why it never happened to me? No, no, no. So I had some stuff going out. Guy messages me, hey man, it says there was something damaged. I'm like, okay. Hmm. Normally when a package of booze is going out, if anything happens, it's a bye-bye birdie. So I'm like, does it say, you know, confiscated, destroyed, anything? Other derogatory term that I'm sure you've seen recently. What did what did you say? Mine said package damaged and then unable to deliver. And then when I went to I'm not gonna name the place that it was shipped through, but when I went there to pick it up, they said, Oh, we already sent it off to get destroyed. And I said, Oh, you meant somebody was drinking it. Knowing John had this happen to him literally a week ago, I kind of have a little bit of panic at first and I say, well, can you pull up the tracking and reroute it to a different address or something? Guy says, no, it says that per shipper's instructions, it is to be returned to the shipper. So did your dumbass just like say return to sender if something happened? Or? No, I didn't do anything different on the shipping. So I, I'm like, all right, well, I guess, I guess we'll see what happens here. Who knows? But it does not say, you know, confiscated, destroyed, lost in outer space, etc. Sure enough, on Tuesday, here comes a random box with these, like, funny labels stamped on the top of it. It says, being returned to sender. There's, like, 12 reasons they could have checked a box on why it was returned. None are checked. I'm like, all right, well, what's in the box here? I'm kind of intrigued. But was it the original box you no, sent it in? not the original box. Not by how it Wait, worked. so they took alcohol out of the damaged box and put it in a new box? Well, I don't know. I hadn't got to that part of the story. Okay. So I opened the box. Granted, I'd sent out three bottles. Two are in this box. And you know you have like the um, the wine shippers that are cardboard squares. You know, you can punch the bottom to lock it in the place yeah. and punch the top based on how tall the bottom is. So there was a, one of those boxes inside of a, another box. So double cardboard. So it was like Inception. So... One of the bottles is still in its individual cardboard shipper, albeit wet and like just, I mean, literally like a dog that comes in from being out stuck outside and you're just, <laughs> just drenched. Another bottle, half of the neck is ripped. You can see most of the cork, but the fill level is where it should be and the back half of the neck is not ripped. I really think that it just got damaged. No one opened it, tasted it, etc. Okay. Third bottle's MIA. I'm assuming... That's what soaked everything, considering when I take the first bottle mentioned out of the cardboard. Perfect seal, everything. So what they do? Punt it off a... I don't know, but I mean, literally, it had to be just dropped or kicked to epic proportion. 
Well, because you're a pretty good ship. I mean, you ship but a out lot. Of, out of a, a Bell Mead, an OWA, and a Buffalo Trace, the OWA and the Bell Mead made it back. So the Buffalo Trace broke. Evidently. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I mean, it, it something had to be done to it. I mean, it had to just shatter for whatever reason. And if it's the Buffalo Trace I was thinking of, that was a great pour. It was. Luckily, I had a backup to replace it. <laughs> Very luckily. <laughs> Same with the Bell Mead. But what really cracked me up the most was like, we see stuff on the boards here and there and, you know, exceptions, quote unquote, do occur and things get lost and it is what it is. But who has stuff sent back to them? And they had to blatantly see what they were sending back. I mean, like I said, the, the Bell Mead wasn't wrapped. It wasn't anything. The bottle in the box and then there's the bottle with the just mangled neck. And I mean, a mangled is an understatement. Or just in a plastic bag in a loose box sent back to me. The luck you get sometimes... <laughs> It really pisses me off. <laughs> like, well, that's why I told the guy, I was like, this is a really bad situation, but in lieu of the alternative, this actually worked out pretty well. I mean, because I just got three bottles swiped, or sorry, four. It was four. It was. Oh, yeah. Three bourbon and another spirit that were swiped. It wasn't like an easy bottle to get those three. And even better, you know, yours were both on the same truck of the package you got. And one made it in and one made it in. I know. And they were both alcohol, but one was a distillery was sending us something. I had to sign for it. And then the other was a uh, an incognito box. And that incognito one was the one that got swiped. Ah, I was just amazed. You know what? You're like an idiot savant. I can't believe you sometimes. No, I last time I'm like, how did this really get returned? Like. There's no way around not knowing what was in here. You know, it's not like it was super boa wrapped or something else where you couldn't see what they had. And they sent them back. I hate you so much. (laughs) So one thing we are going to be talking about Old Forester Rye. And I'm very, very excited to actually get into this. This is probably one of our highly anticipated releases. I know this isn't going to be something like allocated stuff that gets super crazy, but we were really looking forward to see how this old Forester rye was going to be. Before we get to that, I just, you know, you were talking about your bell mead. You were talking about how rough it is to lose the bell mead. Can we just talk for a second about mic drop going for two grand? We have to at least mention it because because you look pained. When I brought that up, you're, you look pained a little bit. In the words of Big Brother Aaron Stein, whiskey is stupid. (laughs) I just don't understand the thing to me that I don't get. And I'm not trying to rain on anybody's parade. If you can get, I'm all about capitalism. If you can get two grand for it, great. But what I would argue is that Bell Mead that you had, that you got shipped back to you, is just as good as that mic drop. If you're talking about an MGP release... We did a blind on Mike Drop versus Bell Mead versus Boone County versus Chattanooga. Granted, and this was Mike Drop 2 that pulled in all the coin. It is Mike, Mike Drop, Drop two, 2 that only had two. I think Mike Drop 1 is going for like 350 400 Mike Drop 2 that only had 200 bottles. But if you think about every single single barrel MGP that is coming out that's kind of in that sweet spot. Well, I just think in general, what? Part two was ever better than part one. Uh, Hot Shots? Not part two. The Godfather. I uh, haven't seen those. Godfather part two was really, really good. First thing that came to my mind, and these were not where part two was better than part one, was probably any movie I've ever watched. Ghostbusters, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Secret of the Ooze? I know what that is. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Exactly. That's why I don't know. Secret of the Use, I forgot. No, I mean, regular Godfather is better than Godfather 2. I don't want anybody... But 3 was... We just forget about 3. The... um, Trying to think. Just saying. Based on the... If you want to apply this literally to other things in life, rarely is the sequel as good as the first one. Look at musicians and albums. Trying to think of a sequel. You're really (laughs) making me rack my brain here. Which is one pinball bouncing back and forth. It's two. <laughs> it's not. It's multi. It doesn't count when it hits both sides. It's, it's still the same ball. It's multi ball, but one already fell in the in the <laughs> gutter. No, I mean you're right. 
You're right. All I'm saying is that if you think about the single barrel MGPs that are out there, I mean, why isn't Blom Brothers getting a grand? Why well, don't encourage them. They get a fair amount already. Well, I'm just saying, if Mike Drop 2 is going to be two grand, all these Bell Meads, all these Smooth Amblers, all these other things, you'd think that it would be the same price. Well, I don't think any of it's worth two grand, but... What bewilders me the most is that bottle does not have a sticker or wax. Which means the juice isn't as good, right? We need to drink, damn it. <laughs> Let's talk about Old Forester Rye. This is a 100 proof, 50% ABV, non-age stated, 65% rye. Zeke, you're going to love this one. 20% malted barley, 15% corn. The 750 goes for about $25.99. And get this, a liter of cola for a cop, it's $29.99. So sitting in the store, I bought this one for us to actually taste. And I said, why would I buy the 750 if I can get a liter for four bucks more? This one was created by master distiller Chris Morris and master taster Jackie Zykin. It was inspired by Normandy Rye. So this is the same mash bill as Normandy Rye that was acquired by Brown Foreman in 1940. Same recipe. They're just kind of bringing it back under a new label. When did the Normandy Rye die? I don't know. Me either. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, I didn't even know Normandy Rye was a thing until tonight. Me either. All I ever heard about is, you know, Cream of Kentucky and oh, what's the other one that they used from back in the day they sourced from? Medley. Yeah, Cream um, of Kentucky and Medley. Those were the two big boys back in the day that, you know, the, the original Van Winkles came from, all the Epic Willets, etc. Well, you learn something new every day, right? And you forget three. It's a vicious cycle. I forget a lot. I forgot our SD card tonight to record. I had exactly. to go drive home. Second time in two weeks. Well, you know, it's bat, in the computer. A thousand. It's in the computer. I'm editing. <laughs> I forget. Let's get into this. We This is probably one of the biggest things. I think I said this already that we were looking forward to so far. So I know... For weeks, 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 Zeke's like, hey, you getting that old Forrester Rye. You're getting that old Forrester Rye. You're getting that old Forrester Rye. So when it finally hit the Nashville stores, I was right there first in line to go get some. Finally hit his right. Jesus. Took us forever, you bookers. I know. Well, everybody uh, everybody was out there showing off pictures of old Forrester Rye for weeks. I'm like, when is it going to hit Nashville? But it's here. Everybody in Nashville, don't worry. It's here. Zeke, go ahead and tell me what you thought about this one. My first line would be, uh, not so fast in Lee Corso fashion. <laughs> Nose-wise, I got a uh, double mint chocolate chip ice cream at first, followed by uh, some barley wine, and then a little bit of orange zest that would be um, you know, scratching the rind there, and you get those little flakes off the top part. Just the aroma that comes off of that from the peel. Palette-wise, I thought it was fairly faint, at least initially. And then the proof kind of kicks up some. And as it progressed through it and had a few tastings of this, I really began to wonder if it was, you know, the rye kick itself or somewhat of the barrel char being imparched into it. Because it seems like a rye kick at first, but then the flavors I got were a very light barley flavor, and it was very dull that's the best word i could get for it which i'm sorry is not a good one but it was just a, a dull light barley flavor beneath the heat that was coming off and as far as a finish i put down it was a singe that hung longer than expected or, or probably even should have for 100 proof and it really was just a, a singe literally like when you put too much tabasco on the pizza once it goes down you don't taste much but that tabasco kicks you at least two or three good times hmm Interessante. I know. Um, I was a little surprised, but it is what it is. Would you like to hear what I thought? I mean, I guess I have to either way, right? So the nose, I said it was floral with some spice, but not in a rye spice kind of way. A little bit of fruit, chocolate, some citrus. So that orange that you got, I, I definitely saw that. A little bit of brown sugar. The taste... I said the first sip, even though you know it's a wash, is a spice bomb. Black pepper and allspice really gives your mouth a dry tingle. When you get that throwaway sip out of the way and you do your next sip, 
The spice gives way to caramel nutmeg. It's quite nice. The spice isn't too spicy, though. When I say there's spice, it's not overly spicy. It's kind of more what I would expect from a rye. It gets less and less spicy with each sip, but I definitely noticed the brown form and banana kind of towards the end. And then the finish, I got the pepper and banana. You and I must have had different food today. No, I've even uh, I've danced around with this for a while. I've had multiple pours of other things and eaten a little bit and tried to make sure if something was in or off of tune. But, you know, I kind of thought what was interesting to me wasn't necessarily what was in the glass, but, it, you know, what wasn't. A, it, it wasn't Christmas in a bottle, which so many newer ryes we've had lately are. And I'm not dinging them. That's, you know, typical of a rye profile. Uh, but this by no means was Christmas in a bottle for sure. We've got a lot of pine and mint on, um, on rye lately. And another thing I thought was interesting, I kind of alluded to earlier in the notes, coupled with the heat that comes off of it, I get a pretty fair amount of bitter. I know there's no age statement here. But generally, when you associate heat and or bitter being coupled together, to me, that's just too much wood or, you know, wherever it was aged wasn't the most ideal setting to allow the, the, the juice and the wood to mingle. To me, it seemed like too much barrel was already imparted into it. So I kind of got that more from the pepper. Like, I, I got that more you know, every time you said spice. Every time you said pepper, I think of a, a, a bitter bite. And I think we're both getting the same thing, but I didn't take it as an off-putting thing. I took it more of a a spicy rye. You know? Yeah, but it's a different singe. It's 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 not. Regardless of the rye, I feel like the singe that comes off of it is not typical. I mean, it's almost to me reminiscent of some of these things we've had. There were bourbons, not ryes, but you could tell the juice literally was just cooked or pushed into wood that was possibly burnt too long and it just had that extra flavor or, or even inversely for older juice you know some of these 12 and 13 year products that we've had that are just past their prime and, and they've gone bitter from too much wood I don't get it like that though because I quite like this one I think this is something that you're taking it more of as a bitter I kind of didn't mind it as much in the in the rye. I don't mind that peppery note like I would more in a bourbon because I think there's some spice that's already coming from the rye anyway, so it blends well. I think at $30 for a liter, this is something that's really approachable for me in the sense that you can make cocktails out of it because of all the spice. You can also sip it neat. I really think it's kind of like that rye that you should always have on the shelf. I think the mash is just out of whack or the barrel's got toasted or cooked too long, you know, knowing how, you know, Brown Foreman has the unique barrel. Something there is just out of whack to me. I get a very drying, bitter singe that I don't associate to a rye. Drink plenty of cash strength ryes, and the, the burn that comes off from that is either due to the alcohol or the grain this I strongly feel like is, is something directly from the barrel. Uh, so I just took another sip. If I were to give this to you blind and just be honest, put yourself, let's, let's get in a little role playing exercise here. If you didn't know this was a rye, would you still feel that way? Well, to that point and put it in a whiskey no, no, category to, to that point and, and no bullshit aside, I didn't know the mash when we tasted this. You saw me get up and grab the bottle and have a funny look on my face as I was reading both labels. I was looking for the mash bill because I thought the mash was out of whack, that the barley seemed just too dominant and something else about it seemed off and it was that drying and parching flavor. Those are the two things I liked. Obviously not blind because I knew what I was drinking, but I didn't know the mash. Here and where the barley content is there, it's just off to me. And I guess looking at the... Normally you like more malted barley, too. It, it's an it's a interesting line, but... You're a fickle guy. Well, no, I was going to say, to that note, you, you can't label a grain. I mean, they're all different depending on where you get it from and how you malt it. But my simple thought was that Woodford came out with a malt recipe. 5149 malted barley versus corn. 
did not care for it really either. So, I mean, maybe it's something with the grains they're pulling or, or how they mix it or what they're doing. I mean, early times, obviously, I love the shit out of, but I'll still say my value play, inexpensive, cheap-ass rye, George Dickel. <laughs> Granted, it's not Dickel, it's MGP, and they just charcoal filter it, but that's still uh, that's still going to hold the ranking as my uh, go-to cheap, I'm going to chug some rye. I, I don't know why you got to be so negative. I really enjoyed this one. I'm not negative. I'm just being honest. We're being honest. We could both be honest. I mean, it had a really good nose. I liked it. It had a different nose. Taste didn't follow suit. Fair enough. Not the first time. Won't be the last. Nope. And there's plenty of stuff we don't agree on. I think especially it's priced right. I think it it's a... you, You can't think of it in a traditional rye. And maybe that's because I'm an old soul. I don't mind the 1940s recipe. Who I just, knows what grains they had in 1940? I don't know. To me, this one's dangerous. Like, I feel like I could kill a bottle pretty quick. I feel like I could give you a bottle if I bought one pretty quick. Okay. <laughs> I'm waiting. Yeah, I mean, it's inexpensive. Obviously, it's not going to hurt you if you buy one. My official recommendation would be bar at best, but uh, I'm, I'm a pass on that one, surprisingly. Didn't well, see it coming, but... I am a buy on this one, Zeke. One I think will always be in my bar. Anyways, one thing we want to tell you before we actually get off here is March 30th, we are going to be podcasting the Whiskey Warmer. It is a whiskey event down in Franklin, Tennessee at the West Haven Residence Club. Go ahead and visit whiskeywarmer.com. They do an event here in Nashville. They also do another one in Memphis. We're going to do some cool things. We're going to try to get some people on the show that are actually there doing the event. There are some local distilleries we definitely want to hit up. We know Carruthers is helping to sponsor it, so we'll make sure to get Justin and James on. Franklin Cigar is going to be doing something there, so maybe we can get something going with them. We have some big news. We can't necessarily announce it yet. I know this is a big tease. I'm hoping that we can announce it this week, but just want to let you guys know, but something big is going to be happening. If you haven't got your tickets yet for Whiskey Warmer, go ahead and go to their website. Come see us because we'd love to see you. We're going to be down there. We'll have a table. Zeke, I'm trying to work on getting us a banner, so I might need you to chip in some money, FYI. Oof. Just to get a dad's drinking bourbon banner so people know who we are. I got a few things going on right now. Yeah. And by that, I mean a few bottles. Okay. So for the big thing, are we going to braid your beard? Finally put some beads and stuff in there like David Allen Co.? Maybe. I think you're getting close. You think I could do it? You got some serious waves in that thing. You love the waves, though. I mean, Lord knows what, what particles are, are somewhere deep lodged in there. Well, I'm just thinking the waves kind of, it, it'll lull you like uh, it'll it'll actually hypnotize you because you'll just look on the wave. You're starting like that guy that's in some of the Rob Zombie flicks. Uh, was it Devil's Rejects? <laughs> Is that what you call me? No, you know the movie though? It's got the bald guy with a huge beard. It's like yeah. lengthy and whatever yours is. <laughs> You're getting there. <laughs> well. That, that could be Halloween this year. Maybe. Maybe. All I know is it looks better than that mustache. Please, son. Yeah. <laughs> I don't look like I have a van with this beard. This is way past the van mustache. No, it still looks like a van mustache. Oh. Yes. It's huge. It's Uh, flared out. You look like a type of guy who would drive an ice cream truck. Please. On that note, go ahead and go to whiskeywarmer.com. Go ahead and go to Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Find us there. Join our Facebook group at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. It's a closed group. Answer a couple questions. We'll let you in. Find us on Twitter at Bourbon Dads, Instagram at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. You've already found us on your favorite podcast app, so please leave us an open and honest review. We'd love to hear from you. Zeke, where else can the folks find us? Nashville, Tennessee, or end of the month at the Whiskey Warmer. Cheers. Ciao.